Welcome to the Songwriting Tool. The Songwriting Tool has many different features that can help us write and record songs or ideas for songs. We will talk about all of these features in this video. Let's first talk about the Tablature Timeline. The Tablature Timeline is shown at the bottom of the screen. Each section in the timeline represents a measure where we can add notes to the tablature. The number at the top of each section tells us where we are in the tablature. We can scroll through this timeline by panning left and right with our finger. Next, let's look at the settings located to the right of the timeline. The slider at the top of these settings allows us to shrink or expand the sections of the timeline. This helps us view more or less of the timeline, depending on our preferences. Below the slider, we have four different buttons. The first button in this row allows us to change the duration of our song. We can select how many minutes and seconds the song will be. Tapping Done will confirm our selection and update the duration of the timeline. However, we must be careful because updating the duration will delete everything associated with our song and will reset everything to the default settings. So we must make sure to select the duration of the song before we begin our work. The second button in this row allows us to change the time signature of our song. Here we select two numbers for the time signature. The left number represents how many beats there are per measure. The right number represents what kind of measure will receive one beat. For example, if the right number is a four, then every quarter note will be a beat. If the right number is an eight, then every eighth note will be a beat. Let's choose a 3-4 time signature for now and select the Done button to confirm our decision. Again, we must be careful because changing the time signatures will destroy all of our work just like changing the duration. So we should select a time signature first before we begin our work. The third button in this row allows us to change the quantization of the timeline. The quantization determines the resolution of the timeline. In other words, it allows us to zoom in or zoom out of the timeline. For example, if our quantization is one-fourth, then we will only see whole measures and quarter measures on the timeline. If our quantization is one-eighth, then we will only see whole measures, quarter measures, and eighth measures on the timeline. Let's select one-eighth for this tutorial video. Notice how the timeline has changed and we can now see eighth measures as well. These are represented by the measures with three numbers instead of two numbers for quarter notes and the single whole note numbers. Also, another way to change the quantization of the timeline is to use pinching gestures on the timeline with two fingers. Here we can see the quantization changing as we zoom in and zoom out with our two fingers. The fourth and last button in this row allows us to change the beats per minute of the song. The beats per minute tells us how fast the song is. For this tutorial, we will keep the beats per minute at 80 BPM. To the left of these rows of buttons, we can see an orange button with an arrow. This button allows us to hide the timeline settings to allow us to see even more of the timeline if needed. Below these timeline settings buttons, we can see some information about our song. The title and artist of our song will update once we save our song. However, we will talk about saving our song later. To the right of that information we can see the play button, which will allow us to listen to our song, but currently, we have nothing to play. Let's fix that by adding a single note to a measure on the timeline. We can do that first by tapping the measure that we want to add a note to. We will select measure 2 first by tapping on that measure. Next, we can add a note to our tablature at measure 2 by tapping a fret on the guitar above the timeline. Let's add a note now. Notice how the string in our measure on the timeline updated with the fret that we tap. Also, we can see that when we tap the fret, a loading animation appeared at the top left of the screen. This is because the application is loading the new audio for this change. This happens each time we update the timeline with new information and we must let it finish before we can play our song. Now, let's try and play the song. We can tap anywhere on the timeline to select a starting location to play the song from, and then tap the play button at the bottom right of the screen to start. Let's do this now. Notice how we heard the note that we placed in that measure at the correct time in the song. Now let's talk about a couple of other types of notes we can place. We can also place hammer-on notes and pull-off notes. 
This is done by holding our finger down on a fret, dragging our finger to another fret on the same fret, and letting go. If we drag it to the right, it adds a hammer-on note. If we drag it to the left, it adds a pull-off note. Notice how this added a hammer-on note to our selected measure. Now let's talk about some of the tools we have to help us sufficiently place more notes on the timeline. To the top right of the timeline, we have a copy, cut, duplicate, and delete button. When using these buttons, we can also select multiple measures by holding down our finger on a measure and dragging it across the measures we want to highlight. The copy button allows us to copy the highlighted measures to another location on the timeline. Once we tap the copy button, a transparent image of our measure will appear. We can drag this image to another measure on the timeline and drop it. If there are no other notes at this measure, then it will automatically be copied. However, if we try to copy measures to a section of the timeline that already has notes, then two new buttons will appear. These are the override and merge buttons. This allows us to either completely override the measures with the copied measures, or merge the measure and only copy the specific strings to the new measures. The second button is the cut button. This behaves the exact same way as the copy button, but will delete the measures from the old position that the notes were copied from. The third and final button in this row is the duplicate button. Tapping this button will reveal a couple of arrow buttons. We can tap the right and left buttons to quickly duplicate the measures directly to the right or left. Once we have the number of duplicates we want, we can tap the duplicate button again to confirm the change. Just like the copy and cut buttons, we can override or merge the changes. Let's look at the top right section of the timeline now. We will notice that there is an undo and a redo button. We can tap the undo button to undo the changes we made to the timeline. While the redo button allows us to redo those changes on the timeline. Now, let's look at some of the helpful tools we have that will help us locate notes, chords, and scales on the fretboard. We can see to the left of the undo button, we have a scale button, a chords button, and a calculator button. Tapping the scale button will reveal a scale selection pop-up window. We can choose a root note in scale by tapping on the corresponding buttons. Let's choose E major. Notice how all of the notes of E major have appeared on the fretboard. We can then still tap on the fretboard where we want to add a note, and the string on the fretboard will update, along with the measure on the timeline. To clear the helper notes from the fretboard, we can tap anywhere on the timeline. Similarly, the chords button will reveal a chord selection pop-up window. We can select any chord here to reveal the notes of that chord on the fretboard. Let's tap the B major chord. We can notice that the fretboard has updated with the notes of the B major chord, and we tap the fretboard to add notes to the measure on the timeline. Then we can tap the timeline again to clear them. Lastly, tapping the calculator button will reveal a scale calculator pop-up window. This tool allows us to choose multiple chords on the left side of the window. Once chords are selected, every scale that these chords can fit into will appear on the right side of the window. We can then tap one of those scales to reveal it on the fretboard. Let's choose the F minor and G major chords. Then, let's tap the C harmonic minor scale. Again, the scale appears on the fretboard. We can add notes to the timeline and clear it by tapping the timeline. Now, let's look at the lyrics button. This button allows us to add lyrics to the highlighted measures. Let's highlight multiple measures and then tap the lyrics button. This will reveal an add and delete button. Tapping the Add button will reveal a pop-up window with two text fields. We can enter a title for this section of lyrics in the top text field. Then we can add the lyrics in the bottom text field. Let's give these lyrics the title chorus, then type some lyrics and add them to the timeline. Notice how the lyrics appeared at the bottom of the timeline over the measures we were highlighting. Usually the lyrics won't fit in this small box. We can tap the bottom of these measures to expand the lyrics and see all of the content. Also, if we want to shrink the lyrics, we can tap the bottom of the lyric box. Furthermore, we delete these lyrics by highlighting any measure containing this lyrics box, tapping the Lyrics button, and then tapping the Delete button. Now, let's look at the Record button. 
The record button allows us to record audio over certain measures using our device's microphone. First, we can select where we want the recording to start by selecting a measure. Then we can tap the record button to reveal an add button and a delete button, just like the lyrics button. We can start our recording by tapping the add button. Once the add button is tapped, a metronome countdown will start playing. The metronome will cover one measure before the recording begins. As we record our audio, the timeline will move forward. Whenever we are done recording, we can tap the red stop button where the play button usually is. This will reveal an audio wave representing our recording on the timeline. Now, if we play our song, then our recorded audio will be heard in our song along with any notes on the timeline. Just like lyrics, we can delete any recording by selecting any measure that contains the audio recording, selecting the record button again, and then tapping the delete button. Finally, let's look at a few last features at the top of the screen. If we tap the down arrow image in the orange box, it will reveal a window that shows all of our recordings and lyrics on the timeline. Here we can hide recordings and lyrics on the timeline by toggling the corresponding switches. If we can't find a specific recording or lyric, we can select one in this window and the timeline will scroll to that specific item. Lastly, we can delete any of these items by swiping them to the left and then tapping the delete button. Tapping the arrow in the orange box again will hide this window. That covers every feature that helps us build our song. Now let's look at the save button and the load button at the top right of the screen. Tapping the save button will reveal two text fields where we can enter the title and artist of our song. Once we confirm this by tapping the save button, then the title and artist information will update on the bottom right of the screen and the song will be saved to our local hard drive. Finally, tapping the load button will reveal another window. This window lists all of the saved songs on our local hard drive. We can load a song into the timeline by tapping one of these songs in the list. Also, we can delete a song from our local hard drive by swiping to the left of the song and then tapping the delete button. That covers every feature for the songwriting tool. Enjoy!